It's my pleasure to welcome you to Answers from Scripture. Whether you're just being introduced to the Bible for the first time or you've been studying it for a lifetime, I'm confident that you'll benefit from Brother Mark's passionate explanations for the Word of God. Hello, my friends. This is Brother Mark and Answer from Scriptures. And we had this question that we received by email. For whose benefit was Christ tempted? We have this story right after the baptism of Jesus Christ that he went out and he was fasting and he was tempted of the devil. And for whose benefit? If you turn to Matthew chapter 4, that's one of the places you'll find that story. Matthew chapter 4, you find it also in Luke chapter 4, you find it in Mark as well. But Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 says this, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And I'll just start right out with my answer. I believe this was for our benefit. Clearly, it wasn't for Christ's benefit. And I want you to think about it. Most everything in Christ's life was for our benefit. He would have been far better off on his own had he just remained in heaven with the glory that he had with the Father from before the world began. But he gave up all of that glory, came down, and he took upon him the form of a servant. And he was made in the likeness of men. The Bible says he humbled himself. The Bible says he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with griefs. He would have been far better off staying in heaven, but he came here for us. He was sent for us. And he didn't come to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So this question, the same question can be asked about almost anything during the life of Christ, during his earthly ministry. Uh, For what benefit? You think about his baptism. Did Jesus Christ, the creator of the world, the Savior of all sinners that come to him and receive him by faith? Did he need to be baptized? Well, those, that's the same thinking John the Baptist had. <laughs> you don't need to be baptized by me. If anything, I need to be baptized by you. But he said, I'm going to do it to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus Christ came, and one of the things Jesus Christ did on this earth was he showed man how to do it. Jesus Christ came, and he lived the example of fulfilling righteousness. If we were sinless, what would our life look like? If we had that divine nature in us and we were living filled with the Spirit in accordance with that divine nature, what would we do? How would we act? How would that look? And Jesus is our perfect example in every way. He suffered, not only suffered for us to pay for our salvation, but suffered leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. So when we read this story, Jesus has been baptized by John. Now he's being led out into the wilderness. And we notice especially led by the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God leads Jesus in the wilderness to be tempted. Why? He didn't need to be tempted and tested. God the Father and God the Holy Spirit knew very well who Jesus was. But this temptation, again, I believe for our benefit. Well, how for our benefit? How does it benefit us? Well, one, it teaches us that not all temptation of the devil comes because of sin. Adam and Eve hadn't sinned at first when the devil came to tempt them. Nonetheless, the devil came to tempt them. Jesus was sinless. He did all things without sin. And yet he was tempted of the devil. There's this human reasoning that every time we fall into testing and every time maybe we have a trial like Job or uh, a, it's a, just a little bit like Job, I should say. We, we've never faced trials like his, but a microcosm of Job's macrocosm and we're feeling Job-like in our day that we stop and we realize that these trials come to all and they don't always come as chastening for sin. Jesus had no sin, and yet he was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted to be tried of the devil. So it's teaching us some things when that comes into our lives. 
That doesn't necessarily mean you were doing something wrong. God may be preparing you for the next step of your life and he has in his will to lead you in that way to go through this time of trial and temptation. Just like for Job. God didn't tempt Job to sin, but God did allow Satan to test and try the genuineness, the authenticity, if you will, of Job's faith. And that benefited Job, it benefited all around Job. But this, God allows us to be tempted. And the devil sometimes leaves us alone for a little while. And then all of a sudden he comes and it seems like everything that could go wrong does go wrong. And we begin to wonder, what did we do to deserve this? And we're reminded Jesus went through it and he did nothing to deserve it. This is a part of life. And then at the very end, we see that the devil departed from Jesus for a season. So we learn as well that tempting and testing is often seasonal. The devil will attack us for a while, he'll leave us alone for a while. Then he'll attack us for a while, then he'll leave us alone for a while. So there's some things we learn about ourselves and about our own trials in life. There are also some things that we learn about Jesus. Not only that now we can better relate to him because we've seen the way he fulfills righteousness, but also that he can better relate to us. If you go just for a moment to Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, and I'm going to read verse 15, which in verse 14 of Hebrews 4, Jesus is identified, Jesus the Son of God is identified as our great high priest. And then verse 15 says, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. We don't have a high priest that just lives far away and has never known what it is to be hungry, has never known what it is to be thirsty, has never understood what it is to go through a time of trial. No, it says, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Now we see Christ's example. We see that he could be tempted and not sin. So now if we've been made partakers of his divine nature, we have the potential of being tempted and overcome and not fall into sin. But, but more than that, we can't shake our fist at God and say, God, you just don't understand. God, you've never been through it. God, you've never had a problem. You've never been hungry. You've never been sick. You've never been weary. You've never been thirsty. You've never been tempted or tried or tested. No, we have a high priest that's been tempted in all points, like as we are, yet without sin. There's another way I think that Christ's tempting was for our benefit. He showed us how to do it. He showed us how to overcome that temptation. And if you look at Matthew chapter 4, or you look at Luke chapter 4, every time the devil came at Jesus with a temptation, Jesus responded with scripture. The Bible tells us that we're supposed to put on the whole armor of God. And most of that armor that's listed is defensive. It's to protect the mind, to gird about our loins, to have the shield of faith. All of those things are defensive. But there's a weapon involved, and that's called the sword, the sword of the Spirit. And what is the sword of the Spirit? The Word of God. Our weapons aren't carnal. The weapons that God gave us aren't carnal, but they're mighty to God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Well, what is one of those spiritual weapons, those non-carnal weapons that we're supposed to use to pull down the strongholds of the devil? It's the sword of the Spirit the word of God. And every time that the devil comes at Jesus and the devil tries to tempt Jesus, turn the stones to bread, uh, bow down and worship me, whatever the temptation, Jesus responded with scripture. Why? He's showing you how to do it. He already knew how to do it. He knew how to rebuke Satan with one word and have Satan flee. But he's teaching us, we don't we don't have that automatic power where we can just look at Satan and with a word, make him flee from us. But we do have the word of God. Learn it, memorize it, hide it in your heart. Because when the devil comes and he begins to tempt you to do something, there ought to be a Bible verse come to your mind that you can use to respond to the devil and have victory over sin. So when we look at this event in the life of Christ, we should see it that Christ endured it for our benefit to show us how to be more like him, to show us that he could be more like us, 
to make that connection between the God-man and the man that God created who now has been made partaker of his divine nature. If there was a human being who had the nature of God, how would he act in this world? And the answer to that question is Jesus. And these type of experiences in the life of Jesus are for our benefit so we'd understand how to answer that question. I hope that helps you. I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you again next time. God bless you. Thanks so much for listening. If you have a question you'd like to have answered, mention it in the comments field below or visit us at www.answersfromscripture.online. <laughs>